Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Project Auto YouTube channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. And in today's video, as you can see, we are here with the 97 Dodge Ram 2500 with the V10. Now, if you remember in the last video, um, this truck wasn't here. Um, and for those of you that don't know, the truck had its transmission uh, completely rebuilt uh, from the ground up. A heavy duty rebuild, heavy duty torque converter, uh, solenoids, bands, everything's been totally upgraded and rebuilt uh, in this truck. Um, we got it back, as you guys saw, and then uh, it was leaking, and I didn't know where from. Obviously, it's under warranty, so I took it back to the uh, shop that did the rebuild for me and uh, uh, took them a little bit of time because they've been pretty backed up, you know, with COVID and, and everything else going on in the world today. <laughs> Uh, they were busy, so they were kind of backed up, so it took them a little while to get it back. Um, but the reason that it was leaking, as you can see right here, these front cooler lines uh, were bad. They were rusted. They were uh, pretty, pretty, in pretty rough shape. Um, so they uh, replaced them. And uh, so we got new front cooler lines. We got the truck back. And uh, <laughs> this has been my run of luck. On the way back home um, something flew up and hit the truck I think it was a rock or or something uh, from the road flew up and hit the uh, the truck and we started losing transmission fluid and as you can see right there there's a nice hole it's kind of hard to see on camera but there's a hole uh, right there um, and this is the transmission cooler um, so fluid was just kind of pouring out um, you can actually see some discoloration in the rocks here where when I got back home and I was messing with it, fluid was just pouring out everywhere. So, um, and for those of you that don't know as, either as well, these Dodge V10s, um, parts are extremely hard to find. Um, and when you do find them, you're going to pay an arm and a leg. Um, so I was able to find a direct OE fit uh, transmission cooler. It was about 200 bucks. I know 200 bucks for this this little guy here uh, but we need it so we're waiting on FedEx to bring it to us today today is Monday um, it should be here before too long I said by 8 p.m. but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to remove the old transmission cooler um, and then we'll get the new one installed once it gets here so without further ado let's get started so this video is going to pertain only to this truck so this is a 97 2500 with the v10 now every truck is different um, i don't know if all v10 2500s have the cooler in the same spot i assume they do anybody can correct me if i'm wrong um, but the reason i say just this truck is i want to come over here and show you the other truck that we have um, that's our parts truck for that truck um, as you can see there's no cooler up here in the front uh, like the uh, the one is on that truck so the 1500s with the v8s um, or even the 2500s with the v8s might be a little bit different uh, but this is going to be for the 97 2500 with the v10 so let's get started so all you're going to need is a basic socket set um, some deep wells might help you um, some extensions a ratchet and then something else you're going to want is some kind of container to catch any fluid that might come out of the uh, transmission lines right here that go to the cooler. When we take those off, we might lose a little bit of fluid, so you'll want a container to uh, catch any of that fluid so you can go ahead and put it back in the transmission. If you're not worried about that, let it leak out, get you another quart of fluid, and just put it back in that way. But me, I'm going to save a little bit of money after spending 200 bucks on this and 200 bucks to have the lines replaced. Um, we are going to save the fluid that comes out of there. So, like I said, all you're gonna need, sockets, container, and then a towel if you want for your hands. Um, so, let's get started. So, I've already started the process, um, but I'm gonna show you um, what you need to do. So, for the cooler, you're gonna have a bolt right up here at the top. There's gonna be one right here off the side. This one's gonna be very hard to get to with this plastic uh, trim in the way. If you want to make it easier, you can go ahead and just take off the front bumper. Um, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it without doing that, just because we have this brush guard, we have lights. I don't want to have to uh, take all that off and have to redo all of it. Um, I, I do have to redo the uh, connection for the light, but that's separate. Um, so this one's going to be pretty tricky to get to, but it's manageable. I got it with 
this right here um, socket extension and it was a 10 millimeter these two were 10 millimeter and then there's gonna be a third one all the way at the bottom I'll get underneath the truck and show you here in just a minute that's the one that we're gonna show you taken out um, that you have to take out to get this entire assembly out but first um, since we've already got those two out we just have the one left we're gonna go ahead and go down underneath the truck and disconnect the uh, uh, transmission cooler lines remember where they go um, if you want to get like a marker or a piece of tape and label where they go so you know how to hook them up uh, when you put the new one in you should you know you can do that make it a lot easier um, so we're going to go ahead and take those off and like i said these were a 10 millimeter i'm gonna want to say those are probably an eight uh, but we'll see when we get down there all right so i just went underneath the truck um the clamps that my shop guy used to put these lines back on are actually going to be a six and a half millimeter now these might be different if they're still the factory lines um from when the you know from the factory um so just get underneath double check and see because like i said they all might be different but the ones he used six and a half millimeters so we're going to go ahead and get our socket wrench ready go underneath get those disconnected all right now you're going to have this little mud guard whatever you want to call it in the way all you got to do is just pull it back and then right there is your two, sorry for the camera quality with the sun glare, but there is your two clamps. Go ahead and remove those. And just like I said, remember where they go. So the, the way I'm gonna do it is if you can see how these cross over here, the one that crosses over underneath goes to the line closest to the front of the truck. And then the other one that goes on top goes to the one that's away from the truck, towards the back of the truck. So that's how I'm gonna remember it, just to make it easier and uh, We'll do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and get these disconnected. Alrighty guys. So as you can see, we lost a little bit of fluid out of that line. Not much, just a little bit. Um, so we are going to go ahead and actually put a rag up there because it's still dripping just a little bit to kind of help keep that from uh, losing too much more. Um, or we can go ahead and just leave this container underneath here. But we got both of those lines disconnected. Um, so now what you're going to want to do is there is the last bracket right there. It's going to be a 10 millimeter as well. This one's going to be very tricky to get to because you have these lines in the way. Um, so a, an extension and a 10 millimeter will work just fine. You can get up in there, loosen that up, and we'll be able to take the, uh, the uh, cooler out. Now another quick tip. Um, if you've already taken the top two bolts out, go ahead and just tighten the... Uh, the top one right here by hand just put it back in a little bit that way when you take that bottom bolt out of the bracket this thing just doesn't come flying down and, and drop and get fluid everywhere we're going to want to try to take this out as gently as possible because there's still probably a little bit of fluid inside here and we don't want to get it everywhere um, so just a quick tip put that one back in or save this one for last Alrighty, guys so we got that last uh, bolt out let me go ahead and show you real quick Man, it sucks working on these rocks. So right there, you can see that bracket. If I can get my finger in here. Right there, she's loose. It was kind of tricky, because uh, there's not a lot of room, and this uh, bumper piece was in the way. Well, like I said, it would have been easier if we would have taken the bumper off, but I didn't want to mess with taking this brush guard off. So to make it easier, you can take your bumper off. If not, it is doable without taking the bumper off. So now let's go back up front. And um, like I said, I put that bolt back in to hold this. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, it's gonna be hard with, two, uh, with one hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. See if I can do it with one hand and keep the camera rolling. There we go. I'm gonna set you guys down for all right so now you're gonna want to get your uh any wires that you might have ran out of the way and then uh go ahead and drop it down pull it out from underneath this hood latch cable and then you should be able to lift it right up out of here it'll take some uh wiggling because you've got that bottom bracket there so i'm gonna put you guys down and we'll get that uh, we'll get it out of here. All right, so we got it out of here. I'm gonna show you the best way to uh, get it out of here because it was hard with one hand. Kind of tilt it sideways over this way, slide the cooler that way, almost to in front of the uh, condenser here, and then just pull it straight out. 
And now that we have it out of the truck, I'll be able to show you uh, the hole. So right here in that little channel, there's a nice little puncture hole. So it looks like something pretty big, um, maybe a rock or something that flattened these fins and punctured a nice hole right in that, uh, let's see if I can get the camera to focus, right there. So nice big hole and fluid was just pouring out of there. So um, we got it out of here, out of there. Um, like I said, that bottom bracket was a little tricky. Um, so just keep that in mind, um, but it's not, uh, not too hard. Now reasons you would want to replace um, the transmission cooler is really only just, wow, come on camera, what the heck? Um, really just leaks. I mean, these really don't go bad. Um, they may clog up if you get a bunch of dirt in the transmission, but obviously we're not uh, doing that, so we don't have to worry about that. And it was just replaced, so it's got fresh, or rebuilt, so it's got fresh fluid in it. But the main reasons to replace this is the uh, is damage to the actual uh, cooler itself. So like I said, every truck's probably gonna be different. Um, this one being a 2500 heavy duty truck, it's gonna have obviously a bigger cooler because that, I mean, this, people use these trucks for heavy duty uh, stuff. So you'll wanna make sure that transmission stays nice and cool. Um, and every truck is different of where it's placed. This one happens to be very easy right up here in front. So awesome, good deal. Um, some of them might be hidden, some might be underneath. So you just have to look um, and find out uh, where it's at. And, uh, but yeah, so alrighty guys, so we got it out. So now I have to wait, but you don't, we have to wait for FedEx to drop off the new one, but with the power of editing and just like that, the new one is here. Um, so there is the new transmission cooler. There is the old one. FedEx just dropped it off. Big thanks to them. Um, so immediately you can tell, I mean, these fins are so fragile that i mean of course they're never going to be exactly perfect but always inspect your new parts for damage uh, to make sure that there's no holes or cracks or uh, anything that would uh, potentially cause issues and i'm not seeing anything here so everything looks pretty good now another thing you're going to want to do excuse me as i gently lay that back down is you're going to want to check the uh brackets and the lines to make sure everything um, will work and fit. Now I based this off the picture and the picture matched. Um, so you can see here with the lines, we have one longer, one shorter. Same here, one longer, one shorter. So that'll work just fine. We have top bracket, top bracket, a bracket off the side and a bracket off the side. Now, as you can notice here, they are a little bit different right off the bat. So this one's kind of angled a little bit different than that one, but it should work just fine. If not, we can make it fit. Now here's something that I noticed um, that might cause some issues down the road um, or getting it back installed, I should say. You can see how this bottom bracket that we had all the way at the bottom, the way it's angled. And then if you look at this one here, it's just a little bit different. Now, when I laid this new one over top of this one, those holes for these bottom brackets still lined up, so we should be okay. Um, but naturally, we'll uh, we'll make sure it fits properly and we can get it in there correctly. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get this bad boy installed. Alrighty, guys. So we've got the top bolt in. We have the side bolt in and we just need to get the bottom one in and then uh hook our lines back up and if you guys remember correctly um a good way to remember how the lines go um, is either to mark them or take pictures um so as we stated earlier we'll get those uh put on properly and i went ahead and left the uh caps on the lines you'll want to make sure you do that so no dirt or debris get in those uh, lines to clog up the uh, the new cooler um, so yeah so let's climb underneath the truck we'll get that bottom bolt in <clears throat> excuse me and then uh, we will hook our lines back up put the fluid back that was lost we're good to go alrighty guys and just as I suspected this bottom bracket 
is a lot different as you can tell the hole should be there and the brackets way over here um so i kind of expected this um all of the coolers that were on rockauto.com um all three brackets at the bottom were way different um than what i had and so this was the closest that they had um and it's just not going to work without uh potentially damaging the cooler from bending this bracket and we don't want to do that um so we're just going to leave it with just the two i mean you can tell i'm wiggling it pretty good and it's it's solid it's not going to go anywhere those top bolts are pretty snug so it's not going to go anywhere we're going to go ahead and just hook up the lines we will drive it around see how it does and if it shifts or moves uh, or if we have issues then we will uh, explore another option but i just wanted to show you guys that so if you run into this um, with an aftermarket part that's supposed to be oe fit it's not always going to be exact um, we could drill another hole and bend the bracket like right here to make it flush try to make it flush um, but i'm not even going to mess with it because it's pretty solid and secure the way it is so we're just going to get these lines hooked up and uh, we'll see how it does all righty guys so we got the hoses back on we wrapped it up, there's no leaks. There's no leaks coming out of this cooler anywhere. Everything looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and uh, shut her back off. We'll put that little bit of fluid uh, back in that we lost and we're good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, leave them below. I'll be sure to answer those for you. And I hope this helps you. If anybody with this type of truck, with this motor and this uh, coolant or transmission uh, fluid cooler set up. Um, so like I said, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. No,